Hey guys, in this video we're going to be looking at a difficult SAT math question. Uh, this is a geometry type question and I pulled this off of Reddit. I'm not entirely sure where it came from, but it's one of the more challenging ones that I've seen. So we're going to take a look. Um, it gives us these two equations uh, and we can see that they're equations of a circle. It tells us that in the next part of the question, but it also has this constant a thrown in the mix there and it says that it's between negative 5 and 10 and it asks us for what value of a would the circles represented by the equations meet one another at only one point so this question if you were to use desmos i'm not going to lie it would be quite easy right we can see here by just plugging in the equations that are given right no manipulation whatever you can very easily figure this out with Desmos. We can see that our value we're expecting to get is a value of a equals one, right? But in this video, we're going to be looking at how to algebraically solve this because there's a lot of intrinsic value that you get from problem solving this and the mathematical understanding that is necessary to excel at a post-secondary level. So if all you're looking at is to try to get the highest score, you don't care about your understanding, then by all means, like, go ahead and do it. Um, do it your way. But in this video, we're going to be taking a look at if you're writing the SAT in person, you're not going to have access to uh, a powerful calculator such as Desmos. Um, but I would recommend even if you do have access to it, this is definitely still going to be helpful for your overall understanding and overall learning in the long run. So let's take a look. Okay, first things first, we need to get our, uh, we want to get our circle equations in the form where we can easily identify where it's centered at and what the radius is because they're not right now. And when we kind of have this, uh, these equations expressed in like a standard form, if you will, then what we can actually do is, by completing the square, we can turn it into a form where it's easier to uh, understand. I don't know what the name of this is called, but it's basically like, it's the equivalent of like, almost like the vertex form of a quadratic, right? So I'm gonna label these equations one and two. So for equation one, if we start to complete the square on just the x values, we can do x squared minus x. And we're doing half b squared, right? So half b squared, well, the coefficient on our b term is one, right? Half of that is a half, so then we can do plus four, or that's gonna be one fourth minus one fourth. So we can do plus one fourth minus one fourth. And we're left with our plus y squared equals zero, right? We can now see here that these first three terms can be simplified to x minus half squared, right? And then we're left with plus y squared. We can move the one fourth to the other side. So now we can very clearly see that the center of our circle well, it's shifted to the right by a value of half on our x-axis. And we can see from the y, it's not shifted at all from the y-axis. Okay, And we can see here that our r squared is equal to 1 fourth, which means that our radius is going to be equal to a half. Okay, So we can write here, center at going to be at a half zero. Okay, perfect. So let's do the same thing for number two. Scroll down. Okay, number two, we have, I'm just going to rearrange our x's to, together. So x squared, and we've got a minus ax. x squared minus ax and we've got plus y squared plus 2y 
we also have a plus one. And this all equals zero. Okay. So what for this one, what we're going to do is, well, we'll complete the squares with our x variable, and then we'll complete the square with our y variable, right? So similarly, if we if our b term has got a coefficient of a, well, half of that squared is a over 2 squared, or a squared over 4. So we'll do plus a squared over 4 minus a squared over 4. Perfect. Okay, plus, let's do the y values now. We've got y squared plus 2y. Okay, our b is 2 in this case, so half of that squared. Half of 2 is 1. 1 squared is 1. So we can do plus 1, minus 1. And remember, we still are left with that plus 1. Right, we haven't touched that at all. Plus 1 equals 0. Now we've got this big, ugly equation. And we're going to clean it up. Well, we can see that our first three terms here can be reduced to x minus a over 2 squared. Okay. Remember, we're still left with our this term here. Let's do the y values now. This is going to be, well, our first three terms here. Well, that's going to be y plus 1 squared. And now we're still left with, well, okay, our minus 1 and our plus 1 can cancel each other out. And we are left with a squared over 4. Let's move that to the other side. We get a squared over 4. Right? So now we can more clearly see here, right, that this has been shifted to the left by a value of a over 2. It's been shifted down by negative 1, right? So our center will be at a over 2 minus 1. And the radius, well, we know that's r squared, right? Which is a over 2 squared. So clearly, our value of r is just a over 2. So to approach the how to solve this now. Algebraically, a little bit more complicated, so it's faster, in my opinion, to just kind of visualize what we have found and see if we can figure it out that way. First one is centered at half zero with a radius of half. Okay, so if this is y and this is x, I'll do my very best here. It might be a little bit ugly. Okay, these are all just unit values, okay? So it's gonna be shifted to the right by a half, okay? And it's got a radius of a half. So let's look something like this. I should label this as one, one, minus one, minus one then. Okay, right, because this is a radius of a half. Okay, and then our green equation number two here, well, we know that it's been moved down minus one, that's for sure. That does not depend on our value of a. But the radius and it's how far it's been shifted on the, the x-axis, that does depend. And we all, just a reminder, we also do know that we are constrained between negative five and 10 for our value of a. Okay, so we can kind of, we know that it's going to be shifted somewhere. It's, it's down, the center is down by negative 1, right? And depending on that value of A, could be anywhere, like this, all these points, they could be theoretical values for our center, right? And it could keep going and keep going, right? But we can kind of visualize the if we're looking for one point of intersection, then if the center is right here, at the same center, if it's shifted the same amount to the right as the equation number one, then it's pretty clear to see that this would be a solution, 
right, that we're looking for. A pretty clear one too, because they're shifted to the right the same amount, right? It makes it easier for us. So reminder that this radius is a over two, right? And we're also shifted, in this case, if we're shifted to the right, we're shifted to the right by a value of also a over two, right? So if the first one has a radius of a half, then a over two, right? If it's minus one units down, right? Then this is going to be a distance of minus half, right? So at the at that extreme point, the lowest point of our, our, our equation number one or circle number one, it will be at a y value of minus half. So at the maximum, the maximum point of our green circle number two, well, we want a over two, we want that radius to go all the way to a negative half, right? So that means our radius a over two, we want that to be equal to a half, right? So then we can see here, right? If a over two is equal to a half, very clearly we see that a should be equal to one. And that would probably be the, uh, I say, fastest way that you could do this without, um, uh, without using Desmos. If you were to solve the rest of this, I'm sure that you could find some algebraic way of solving this. Um, but it would take a little bit more thinking and definitely a lot more algebra. You would have to take a look at the distance between the two centers of the circle. And yeah, I, I think I'm, I'm not entirely sure exactly how you would do that with the, uh, but it would be more complicated, that's for sure, than just a straight visualization. I'd have to think about it a bit more. Anyways, hope this video was helpful. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one.